Hello and welcome to The Purple States, presented by me, Evan Lucas, for Go Markets. As always, please have a very good read through of the disclaimer on screen. Everything in this video is general in nature. None of us relied upon as any form of personal advice. Go Markets does not know your personal scenario, nor your personal financial goals, and therefore none of us relied upon as any form of advice at all. It's just general in nature only. Nevada, what an incredible state, because until 2016, it had picked every single presidential candidate all the way back to 1976. It did miss out on Trump, and was the first time it's tripped up, but did get back on the bandwagon when it did pick Biden, which is why it makes into the purple swing states that we continue to look at in this election. First and foremost, Nevada isn't exactly a huge state for electoral college votes. Only six, but it does matter. It absolutely matters with regards to how close the race currently sits. And the reason for that low number is that it is very densely populated, clearly in somewhere like Las Vegas. And then it does have about half a million people up in Reno. And there's a whole heap of nothing in between the rest of the entire state, which is why it's so hard to read and understand what's going on because the overall issues facing the state, are just like the rest of the country, cost of living, what's going on in the overall economy, and whether or not at the moment they're gonna have any sort of major change to their employment and exports. But that's the three top things. But then there's also demographics to it as well. Nevada is a bit like Florida. It has an incredibly large Latino population well and truly above the rest of the country. And why they're fascinating is that over the last 20 years particularly, this group of people have slowly but surely swung to the right and they are more likely to be Republican voters these days than they are Democratic voters. The current numbers have this quite interesting because the swingy on it is high. At the moment, it sits about 48.8 to Harris to about 47.6 to Trump. Don't forget, those numbers don't add up because there's independence in there as well. But overall, it's getting closer and closer. In fact, the closer we get to election day, the polls in Nevada are actually getting smaller and smaller in terms of the differential. That's why it makes it so fascinating. Realistically, Harris needs to hold Nevada. It really, really does matter to her more so than Trump. And even with that small six electoral college vote numbers, if she holds on to that, it will probably mean that she gets back into the chair, whereas Trump could probably lose it and still find himself there if other states go his way. That's why we're watching Nevada quite closely.